Tokyo, Japan, I got the full experience from upgraded seats to losing my luggage, food that I absolutely fell in love with, and also trying out food that I'm 100% fine with never trying again, ever. New here with more traveling content. I really appreciate you all stopping by, checking out the page, checking out the channel. It keeps everything growing. You know what I mean? We're on a journey together. If you haven't already, notification bell, subscribe. Plus it's free. So like, without further ado, let's get into it. So I just got through security. Just for the record, get the right COVID test you need, the PCR one. Uh, I had some back and forth with a couple of agents on which one I needed. Um, the most helpful thing for me was that I had it printed out. So I know a lot of things are on the app. I went and used the app, make sure you print it out, have the paper form ready. It should be good. But security was smooth, it's early, and uh, airport's pretty calm right now. So that's a good thing. I tell y'all I'm so tired. Had a super early start. I didn't finish packing until 4 a.m. So now we're here at the airport at approximately 11.30 a.m. Woke up around like eight, only had like four hours of sleep, but you know what I'm saying? That's just how it's gotta go today, you know? This flight takes off at 12.55 and uh, gets us in to Tokyo at like four or something p.m. the next day. Let's keep our fingers crossed for an upgrade because I would love to get some phenomenal sleep on this trip. all the way to Tokyo, Japan. All right, finished my first meal, finished my first movie. Uh, got a long way to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to take a nap here and uh, shave off some of these hours, you know? And uh, yeah, I'm gonna see you guys uh, when I wake up. Sleep tight if you're going to sleep. It may just be me. Day one in Japan, Tokyo to be exact, we're off to a rough start. I got through customs, stamped my passport, everything was going smooth. I got the worst news you can get at baggage claim. They lost my bag. And to make all matters worse, I did a rookie move. I didn't pack any spare clothes in my carry-on. So with that being said, they officially forced my hand to uh, go shopping today because I need some new threads, bro. But we're going to figure it out. First breakfast. 
All right, so before we move on, we gotta talk about the hotel. So for this trip, I stayed in the APA Hotel and Resort, specifically the Ryo Goku Iki Tower location. This hotel definitely was budget friendly with prices ranging from $41 to $83 a night. And for me, most importantly, a location not too far from anything in the city and not too far from public transportation. So after eating Denny's, checking out some temples in the shops, I decided to make my way down to Shibuya to finally get some shopping done so I can get some clothes. Cause again, I don't have my bag at this moment. I was able to take a train all the way to Shibuya with a few stops. On these strips, you can see all your stores from Dior, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Yohi Yamamoto, and much more. Specifically in this area of Japan, they had your high fashion and your designer brands, but they also had a huge selection of thrift shops. After a long day of walking around and trying to find some gear, I definitely had to get some fuel. We stopped at this ramen spot, 10 out of 10. The staff was super warm and welcoming. And again, the food was just incredible. Like, this is honestly the best ramen I've had in my life. And maybe I'm biased because I'm in Japan, but like, whatever, it was incredible. So while I was out, Delta hit me and they said, hey, we found your bag. Music to my ears. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, it's mine. Let me, uh, oh, you bring I brought it all. <laughs> yes, thank you. For thank you. Absolutely. I've been wearing the same clothes all day. <laughs> no, nah, no worries. Thank you all so much. Mission accomplished. I feel like I can finally start my <laughs> my trip to Tokyo. I just checked the bag, everything's in there. Even left me a little apology on the case. Can't wait to get home, shower, put on some fresh threads. And uh, I don't know, I think we might go out tonight. So yeah, let's get into it. Day three, Tokyo, Japan, we are here. Currently I am in Mayoshi, outside of the uh, Contemporary Art Museum of Tokyo. Really excited. They have a Christian Dior exhibition that I'm hoping to get into. Uh, I just got some tickets for general admission, but the Christian Dior piece was sold out. So something I do in every country or city that I explore for the first time 
is I have to go check out the galleries. I have to go see the art, the music, the culture. So today is that day. I'm gonna be checking out some museums, some galleries. So one thing I wanna to say to any new travelers or people that may be intimidated by traveling to countries where there is a language barrier or where you don't know the language at all. I've been to places like Argentina and Paris where people barely spoke any English to me personally, but I found one thing that helps is always learning those phrases and those introductions and, and just little words here and there that'll help you navigate and you know be polite as you're moving around these different areas you've never been to. Whether it's Duolingo or the Google Translate or even the Translator app, I really encourage you all to just learn certain words in different languages so that even if you mess up, like you can actually show that you're trying and show that you respect their culture and the place that you're visiting. What is my name, this guy? Anyway, don't be intimidated by that. It's going to be a great day. It was supposed to rain, and it's not, so I'm going to take full advantage of it. So I'm going to check out this museum, find some food, and uh, yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. So for me, something that was super convenient was the Kluke app. So this app was very helpful with information and also booking things like travel, hotels, and leisure. The main thing I used the app for was to travel through certain parts of Japan. I got the 72 hour ticket, scan and go, scan and go. It was super helpful and I actually saved a lot of money by doing it that way. And while we're here talking about trains and subways, I gotta say, the cleanest I've ever seen, ever been on, ever. While taking public transportation in Japan, it's a common courtesy not to be loud or disturb the peace. So if you're having conversations, keep them minimal. Or if you're playing music, make sure it's just not disturbing the people around you. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of these Japanese pancakes. I had to check them out. They have to be the most fluffy, delicious thing I've ever consumed in my life. They were so good. I had some green ones, it was mixed with matcha. It was just magical. Absolutely delicious. I could eat those every day for breakfast. And I'm not even a pancake guy. So after eating, I made my way to Akihabara, and this destination was actually something I was really looking forward to. During the pandemic, this is one of the areas that they shut down for a long period of time. Something I thought was really cool here is the capsule machines. And these are pretty much just like vending machines with these capsules that have toys and different figures in them. Super dope. There were so many options. Everything from Dragon Ball, Curious George, One Piece, Kirby, you name it, it was there. I definitely had to get one to take home. The one that caught my attention was a Gundam Wing capsule. They had three variations that you would draw at random and I was actually able to get the one that I really wanted. So that was really cool. Speaking of Gundam Wing, I mean, this game has to be a fan favorite. At the lower level of the Bandai Namco arcade building, the whole area was just for Gundam Wing gaming. It was super cool to see people there from all ages, older, younger, people coming out of school, people coming out for work. I game a little bit in my spare time, you know, I play a little bit of Fortnite, a little 2K, you know. So I took a crazy L in that Gundam game. I don't know what was going on. It was fun, but it just wasn't coming together for me. I don't know what happened. know 
anything about me, I love me some sushi. So specifically on this night, we went to Shinjuku to try out Sushi Makoto. I feel like the best way to taste fresh fish is getting a nigiri course, so that's definitely what I went with. Simply said, 10 out of 10, best sushi ever had in my life, hands down. While we were eating, he was telling us where the fish was from, it was caught that morning, never frozen, the freshest salmon off the coast of Japan. Come on, like, what are we talking about? So something I didn't know if I was going to have time to do, which fortunately I did, was to ride the bullet train. Me and some friends out there decided to take the bullet train from Tokyo, Japan, all the way to Kyoto. Overall, it was a pretty smooth process and easy to figure out, but I was super excited for this two hour trip. I mean, it was a perfect time to go. It was raining in Tokyo that day. And it was bright and sunny in Kyoto. Day trip, why not? And I gotta say the bullet train was nice. It was spacious, had enough room for overhead and under cargo. Even on a cloudy day, looking at the different areas, towns, landscape, it was beautiful. Attention passengers. But the one thing that took the cake was being able to see Mount Fuji. For me, it was a breathtaking experience. Even going as fast as we were, I was still able to get some pretty cool stills on my camera as well. So this day was really cool because I got a chance to disconnect, put my phone down, put the camera away for a little bit, and just enjoy Japan. We checked out different shops, towns, and communities in Kyoto, we went to the park, and also checked out this bamboo forest, which was really nice. Coming back to Tokyo that evening, I decided to go back to the hotel, freshen up, and step out for the night. See what the nightlife was really about. And so I decided to check out Rapungi, which is in the district of Minato, Tokyo. They had everything there from Yahuka spots, food, lounges, and nightclubs. One spot that was recommended for us to go was Zeus Nightclub, which is pretty cool. It was a three level establishment, first level for lounging and smoking, the top floor was the sparklers, bottles, club music, and the second floor was more of your urban hip hop, which was really cool to hear in Japan. necessarily saving the best for last but I was super excited to see the Gundam statue so I packed a little day bag and made my way down to Daira City Tokyo being able to see the side of Japan was super cool it was a perfect day for traveling and I got to see everything from water bridges to even Lady Liberty the area is super ideal for tourists eating shopping or anybody just wants to hang out for sure Needless to say, Kid in the Candy Store, Unicorn Gundam, like, it was everything. The mall had about seven stories, with the Gundam store being on the very top floor.
This trip was absolutely amazing, and I'm really grateful I was able to make this happen in 2023. The remainder of my trip was super chill, eating, spas, parks, museums, just really being present and experiencing Japan. Again, I really appreciate y'all stopping by, checking out this video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me on Instagram at Director Lou, or leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for everyone that subscribed. I really appreciate it. And I guess I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.